still a little dry. I promise uh, it, it won't stay this way. So to establish, anybody know how we establish notice of ownership to the public? I heard it come over here. Recording, yes. And just basic rule. First in time, first in right. That's, that's, that's the magic words. I'm not going to go into any great depth on it. First, in, whoever gets there, whoever gets to the courthouse first, as long as the another person doesn't have notice of your interest, whoever gets there first has the priority. If someone gets there first, but they know that somebody else has a prior interest, and they just happen to walk faster, then they can't get priority because they have no actual notice of a superior interest. That would be like, that, that's a typical first mortgage, second mortgage situation, or where there's two competing deeds. Sir? What I've seen from going to closings is where the, um, the target agent will call in to the county firm's office up north and say, we've just finished the closing and here is specific. So in, in, it's, it's giving them priorities, it's providing priorities. That's, that's what happens. No, sir. They will go tomorrow. Let's say, for example, that your closing is that four o'clock. That, that telephone call does nothing. A telephone call does nothing. The only thing you can do quicker than going to there is using an electronic filing service. That telephone call does absolutely nothing legally. That's, that's what happens. I'm, I'm just telling you the law. Okay. Okay? Uh, Professor, were you just mentioning it's, it's the same thing as a constructive notice? That, when it's recorded, yes. When it's recorded, then anybody's on constructive notice of what's in the public records. Yes, that's correct. And it's so. So if there's a mortgage recorded on the property, then everybody is presumed to know that mortgage exists. So if you, if I come to you and I say, oh no, no, I don't have any other mortgages on the property, uh, you can. I'll give you a first mortgage. But in reality, there is a mortgage there, and I'm lying to you, and that mortgage is properly recorded. You can't rely on what I'm telling you because it's in the public records. And if you don't do the title search, it's your problem. Anybody still awake? All right. I'm going to open up. I'm going to open It's dry, so I'm going to, and I'm at the end of my list, and I've tried to, I've tried to hit the stuff that's important about the deeds. Remember the warranties? The warranties are specific. They're laid out in that special warranty deed I'll post it. Uh, you, it doesn't warrant that the appliances work or anything nasty, you know, special like that. It warrants title to the real estate. It doesn't warrant as to the condition. Um, oh, deeds. I'm just trying to hit some high points about some of these things. Deeds. The person granting the deed has to have legal capacity. That's probably a given. If you're 14 years old, you can't sign a deed. You don't have legal capacity. Um, consideration we talked about. Legal description has to be in the deed. Deed in Florida requires, I'm not, I'm not testing this, requires two witnesses and a notary. There's new changes to the notary law recently because of this horrible thing called online notarization. It's going to be a whole new door open for fraud soon. But we'll see how it works. Um, I'm not, I've made a business decision because of the, the size and nature of the transactions I do, I'm not doing it, but I have now altered the notary block where you have to recite in it whether someone appeared before you by physical presence or remote online notarization. I mean, so what happens is you have a camera and you have somebody that's, whatever, whatever course they've gone through, whatever certification they get, and they do it online. So, they, if, so the person who's standing of this end of the camera proves who they are and the person at the other end of the camera can certify that they, they got the proof, as opposed to like this. When, when did that change? First year. Oh, uh, okay. Working for the bank for so long, you know, we have a bunch of notaries around, and it's like, you have to the forms, physically be here and all that. The forms stuff. have to be changed. Oh, okay. That's the most difficult part of it all. The forms have to be changed. Uh, 
the one thing that people you can just, I, I don't know if you, the person receiving the deed does not have to sign it. With very, very, very few exceptions. So the grant, it is not a requirement that the grantee sign a deed. They just receive it. They just receive it. it has to receive it. You can't take it and put it in the drawer. You know, you can't say, gee, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give somebody a deed, but I'm not gonna give it to them. I'm just gonna sign it and put it in the drawer. That's not delivery. Delivery is a requirement. Delivery means giving it to them. Ooh, ooh. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I don't want to know everybody. This was a this was a dry one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it off. Yeah. I, try, I try to be merciful a little bit. Can you cover everything for the I know, but sometimes, sometimes the, the preparation and the, the length of the outline doesn't always match the time allotted. It's very difficult because it's natural brain points. Sometimes I get off on other tangents, which are fine, but, but sometimes you just don't know where you're going. Is that online notary just the state of Florida or all of them? The law I'm referring to is the state of Florida. It is possible that other states have it. I know they know what the states have. I think Virginia was first. So just, just so you know, in order to, to kind of be fair with a couple of things, I don't want anybody to panic and forget about the, the, uh, the exams. It is multiple choice. And part of what I've been doing, besides looking at the outline, is going back and looking at the, the exam questions that I wrote previously on the topics to make sure that I'm hitting the highlights. So that if I have specific things that I have in the exam questions, I'm making sure to talk about them a little bit. So that you're not surprised by the things so that I don't wind up hitting things that you've never heard of on the exam. So, and I'm trying very hard to stress things that are important, meaning yeah, you might see something like that. I'm not, I don't want to teach to the exam, that's not a good idea. I'd rather you come away with real knowledge. And I'm not looking to murder anybody with the exam, the questions are not tricky or difficult. If you're paying some attention, you're going to get it. Um, so don't want anybody to lose a sleep. Next week? Two weeks. That's not next week, it's the week after? Yeah. Everybody seems to want it sooner. I mean, I can, short, I can take out, I can make it next week and get it over with. Yeah. And because, honestly, let's, let's, I mean, we can talk about this. Um, we, we can make it, I'll tell you why. Next week is leases, and that's a lot of material. So I can. I don't. I don't want. I don't. I, don't, I, 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 I kind of wanted to do it in the middle. I figured because of the number of weeks we have, I do four weeks of teaching, an hour of an exam, and then continue for the other four weeks. So that's the middle of the term, right? Yep. No. What's that? For next week, I'm, no, yeah. I'm not on board with it. Uh, okay, I mean, it's fine. Nothing, nothing right, that I can do is a dry run. What's that? Nothing that we can do is a dry run, like a past exam. Then I can't use it again. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> make you, write, you make me write new questions? No, I mean, like, I just do it later. You just keep repeating the same exams. Well, it's only the second year I'm doing this. Okay. okay. No, I'm going to have to shake them up a little bit, but trust me, because I've written exam questions. You don't want these. I've written exam questions for the Florida Bar Real Estate Certification Exam. You don't want to be you don't want to be anywhere near those. I promise you. And and I've seen questions my colleagues have written. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's super technical. What? It's for lawyers. It's for not only lawyers. It's for real estate lawyers that have been practicing for a certain amount of time, where real estate is a specific amount of their practice. I'm, I'm, I'm board certified in real estate, so I haven't passed the exam in a long time. But that's a long time ago. Wow. How do you determine which document needs a witness and which don't? Oh, well. So does a power of attorney witness? Yes. So oh, no, well, the answer is yes, and here's the, the real answer. The power of attorney has to be executed with the same formalities as the document it's going to be used for. So if your intention is to use a power of attorney to execute a deed, then it has to be two witnesses and a notary and contain the legal description of the property. If you you may not realize this, folks, because I know that, that a lot of the, those of you that work with mortgages and financing and things, a mortgage does not require witnesses. 
That's it's around 1981. However, however, if a corporation is signing a document, the statute provides that a corporation can sign by its president and a seal or president and two witnesses. That's how the execution statute works. And that's any document. Leases, at least for the moment, in excess of one year, require two witnesses of the landlord because it is, as we're going to find out next week, a lease is a conveyance for a term of years. Just like a life estate is for life, a lease is for a term of years. So what would happen, and I'm jumping a little bit, this is a preview. Um, well, back to our property, remember I started off, our property came from ancient England. In ancient England, what would happen would be the feudal lord would lease the property to the serf, I don't know if I, if I have this right, um, and would give it to them for a period of years. And during that period of years, it was up to the lessee, the tenant, to take care of the land, to farm the land, whatever it was, and all of the profits and proceeds from the land belonged to the tenant. The tenant had to pay the taxes. It was literally a transfer of almost the whole title, but only for a period of years. Now, a lease technically is the same thing, but it's really a creature of contract. And in that contract, some of the rights and obligations are shifted back and forth between landlord and tenant. The obligations for real estate taxes, obligations to take care of the roof, obligations to take care of the HVAC system is always a, a big and it depends upon the length of the lease. So stay tuned. We're going to discuss those and other fun things having to do with leases next week. Same bat time, same bat time. Nobody, and nobody here has ever seen those words on TV. Yes,